everybody, and welcome back to the Weiner Wellness Virtual Summit. With me this morning is Mike Gallagher, outside sales professional for the Pennsylvania State and also other areas. Mike, you're just everywhere, but you were my rep. You were my rep, and I was so grateful because you're so highly educated, but you're also a professional educator for supplementation. I mean, you've been in this industry how long? I don't want to oh, say almost it. 28 years, 28 years, man, that's, that's a long time, but nobody yes. knows the supplement industry like Mike. So you're going to be talking to us today about blood sugar and some natural solutions. And I think this is very poignant. I think this is our next pandemic to be honest yes. with you. So thanks for yes. being here. I'm going to pull this up and I'm going to disappear. Okay. Well, thank you, Dr. Tracy. And you are one of my favorite accounts. I just want to say that as well. <laughs> All right, folks. So today we're going to talk um, about a, a very important issue, blood sugar, diabetes. Um, to me, this is one of the most uh, growing issues out there. It's, it's, uh, it, it hits so many people and so many families on so many levels. And uh, the medications aren't uh, fixing the problem whatsoever. They're actually enabling the situation. So this one, um, you know, whenever I'm doing this presentation in front of a group, I always, I always ask the audience, um, is there anybody here that has diabetes type one or type two? And usually it's always a few people in the room. And then I always ask, is there anybody in your family that has diabetes? And almost every hand goes up. Um, you know, so it, it affects every single person in some way, shape or form. Um, so, we, you know, again, when we're going over these these presentations and going over some of the natural ways we can help, um, we just want to put out there that, it, you know, it, it, it's never too late. OK, it's never too late. So the challenge with um, diabetes is that most people don't really see a problem until it's already too late. OK. And the, the challenge here is, you know, when you look at the statistics and and by the way, if someone goes through diabetes, um, they go through all these different stages. OK, so first they go through denial. Can't I can't believe it's me. Then they go through anger. OK, then they go through helplessness and hopeless. And then they go through depression. OK, so there's a series of stages there that takes place. And then uh, we're going to talk about a lot of crazy statistics and very scary stats out there, but I wanted to give a couple that are not even on this presentation. Okay. It's usually not an issue. The first 10 years, as far as health wise, uh, when you're diabetic, now you can lose, you know, you can lose your, your feeling in your fingers and toes called neuropathy, you know, at any time, but it's usually the second 10 years when you are a diabetic or when things start falling apart. Okay. So it affects three major organs more than anyone, uh, any of them. So first your eyes. Okay. The chance of you losing your eyes and going blind is 75% within this, that second 10 year period, years 10 through 20. It's called diabetic retinopathy. It's the leading cause of blindness in people over age 40 in the United States. The chance of you having a heart attack is 50%, 50% in that second 10 year period. And the chance of you losing your kidneys and having to go on kidney dialysis and hopefully you can get a kidney transplant is 75% in that second 10 year period. Okay. So I'm going to get a little personal. The reason why I always like to ask, is there anybody that knows somebody in their family that's diabetes? Because this definitely affected my family and specifically my father. And unfortunately, my father hit every one of these statistics. And I usually don't like to talk about this, but I always think it's really important to share this, this with people because, uh, you know, so just to kind of give you a little highlight of his situation, he was diagnosed at age 40, type two diabetic. He had his first heart attack at age 50. He had a quadruple bypass five years later. He lost his eyesight at 59, went completely blind and had to retire. And he lost his kidneys the year later at age 60. Once you lose your kidneys, you have three to five years on kidney dialysis. 
And they told him he wasn't eligible for a kidney transplant because his, his heart couldn't take the surgery. And he lasted three years and he passed away at 63. And his last five years of his life, I don't wish this on any person on the planet. It was absolutely brutal for my family and my mom. And so it always uh, just touches me so greatly. So um, I don't want anybody to be in that situation. I don't want you to be another statistic, okay? But my, my dad went through every one of those emotions. And at the end, he just gave up. And I'm here to tell people there is hope. And we used to just argue about, you know, I can help you try a different approach. Is what you're doing working? And he didn't want to hear. He was a very stubborn Irishman. And, you know, he paid the price, unfortunately. So when we go through all these statistics and we go through all the solutions here in a second, the one thing that I would tell any diabetic, if you're working with, you know, family member, is I have a little homework assignment. And that is go down to the nearest kidney dialysis center and spend one hour there. Okay. Because that is your future if you live that long. And it's not one hour, it's four hours. You're on that kidney dialysis machine and you are wiped out. Usually you're wiped out that day and by the next day. And it's three days a week. And that was my dad's life. And that is most people who are diabetic. Okay, so I just want to point this out to everybody that, you know, one of the reasons why I do what I do and I'm so passionate about trying to help people is I, I, I've seen the damage. And again, I think blood sugar is one of the most correctable conditions possible, but they're not getting that message from the allopathic doctors and the dietitians. They're telling people there is no hope. And we but I've seen some incredible incredible cases and we're going to go over a couple here at the end here uh, but again there's so so much but the first thing that we want to give is is that hope because so many people have given up hope because that's the message they're getting from the doctors okay so let's uh, continue here so a little disclaimer uh, this is informational purposes only. We're not trying to replace advice of any of your medical doctor or any practitioner uh, before you start any program. Of course, always work with them. Always have an open conversation with them. I'll also give you a, a really excellent book here in a second for, for people who want to hear this message that we're talking about from a medical doctor um, as well. So if we're not telling you to get off any medication, we're not making any claims. We're just showing you the information. And again, it can help. And we've seen it help so many times. Okay, so let's talk about the statistics, okay? So uh, found in all races and ages, tw almost 24 million people right now uh, have type 2 diabetes. Well, 90 to 95% of them are type 2, okay? So the majority of people are type 2 diabetes. Just in USA alone, 10% of women over age 20 and 11% of uh, men over age 20 right now. So again, the younger generation, they don't even call it juvenile diabetes anymore because so many children now are starting to get diabetes. So it's just getting worse and worse, not any better. And it's the seventh leading cause of death. And the World Health Organization calls it a global health problem. And it really is. And it's getting worse and worse. Okay, so let's go over the, the couple of the main ones here. Of course, type 1 diabetes. Uh, basically, your pancreas has completely shut down, right? That is what makes that insulin. So technically, it's classified as an autoimmune issue. There's lots of different theories on why this happens, all right? So we listed several of them. Of course, food, uh, especially food sensitivities. Uh, genetics can play a role. You know, again, we put the question mark there on vaccinations, uh, viral infections, right? Trauma or damage to the pancreas. So can we help somebody with di type 1 diabetes? Yes, okay? Um, we can help manage that insulin better so you don't have the crash and burn syndrome, okay? So again, we can definitely help so you need less and less insulin. That's the whole idea, okay? But the biggie, of course, is type 2 diabetes, Okay, so characterized by insulin resistance, not low insulin levels. Okay, so we want to emphasize that. So maybe genetic predisposition, 
but also highly affected by lifestyle diet. All right. So the whole genetic thing, right? Oh, it's in my genes. It's in my genes, right? So I know I get asked that question if I ever go to a doctor's office or anything like that. You know, if you get into physical or anything like that, they always ask about your health history, right? So, but I've talked to several people, many, many people through the years. Um, am I more susceptible to diabetes because my father had it? Yes. Do I have to be more strict with my diet and exercise more than, than some? Yes. But am I going to get it just because it's in my genes? No. Okay. So basically you want to look at your genes as an on and off switch. The healthier food we give, it's like it's turning that mess positive message on. Whereas and we're slowly giving you the foods that help slow the release of blood glucose, but you eat the junk food and the sugar and the soda pops and all that. Again, that's the negative message from one cell to the next. And again, that's going to spike up your insulin and put stress on your pancreas. And over time, it affects you. Right. And then we end up in situations like this with diabetes and prediabetes. OK, sometimes you hear the phrase metabolic syndrome, also known as syndrome X. That's basically a pre-diabetic situation, and we'll talk about some of those markers here in a moment. All right. So obviously, obesity plays a huge role. Is every obese person a diabetic? No, but eight out of 10 are, 80 percent. So there's a huge connection there. OK, obviously, we talked about the diet and we'll go into more here in a moment. All right. Stress obviously plays a role. And you got to be doing some activity. You have to be doing something that you're working out of sweat and you have to be consistent with it. Right. So all that adds up to if you're not doing those things. All right. So let's back up a second here. Let's go to insulin resistance. All right. So, again, the job is insulin job is to facilitate the glucose in entry into the cells in insulin resistance. The cells become resistant to the insulin. The glucose doesn't get into the cells, builds up in the blood. So medical doctors that like to use these fancy terms, hyperglycemia, that is what we're talking about. The cells then are starving for glucose. They send signals to the pancreas, to release more and more insulin. This builds up in the blood as well. Again, the fancy term there, hyperinsulinemia. So again, those are big fancy words. And to the average person, they don't care about those words. What they don't care about is how it affects them, right? So Again, the classic uh, symptoms, you're always hungry, which leads to weight gain. You can have all different types of inflammatory issues. Obviously, diabetes affects your hormones. You're tired, especially in the afternoon after lunch, right? You, you're always craving for carbs and sugar and sweets and blood pressures associated with it, okay? So again, this is a big, really big deal. All right, so if we get blood, blood test markers, these are what we're looking at for insulin resistance. Again, metabolic syndrome, basically pre-diabetic. So again, there's certain parts, cholesterol, LDL is higher, triglycerides are higher. That's again, the, the fat that's in your blood and HDL, the good cholesterol, so quote unquote, is lower. Your fasting blood glucose is above 110. Your postprandial blood sugar, again, that's two hours after you eat, is between 141 and 199. Your fasting insulin is above uh, between 10 and 12, or over, I should say, above 10 there. Um, all right, postprandial insulin, above 30. BMI, above 30. And I just want to also, of course, wait, obesity, but I want to mention these two other things that also are connected with blood sugar, that um, PCOS polycystic ovary syndrome. So that is an estrogen dominant problem for females where they start getting more facial hair and male characteristics, right? So we know it's an estrogen dominant problem. We've had incredible case studies using the ester cleanse with this. But if you have blood sugar issues, we would also add the glucolase here um, as well that following this program. So keep that in mind, all right? And then the other thing just mentioned is skin tax. So one of the things that Dr. Weiner taught me uh, many years ago, if you start noticing skin tags around the neck area or underneath the arm, it can be blood sugar. And again, these aren't skin tags you were born with. These are things that have or start appearing 
or skin tags. So again, keep keep just keep a note of that. These are some early symptoms that can also be thyroid, by the way, by the way, as well. So skin tags usually either blood sugar or thyroid abnormalities. Okay. Now, uh, diagnosing diabetes, right? So again, these are looking at the lab marker. So obviously everything's gonna be higher when you're looking at the blood marker. So postprandial glucose above 200, fasting glucose above 126. But the most important test for blood sugar folks is hemoglobin A1C or just simply A1C. Now this is a three month window of looking at your blood sugar. So in the past is we had some very smart diabetics let's, that would really eat really clean a day or two before they would go in and get their blood work. And all their blood work was showing that they weren't a diabetic, but they had all the characteristics of being a diabetic. So there's this test is a three month window of looking at your blood sugar, A1C. Most doctors um, put this in their panel now. If they do not, just request it. But you can't cheat for three months, right? So this is the most important blood sugar test there is, is the A1C, all right? So keep that in mind. Uh, other markers we look at, C-peptides, urinary glucose and ketones, antibodies, right? And so get into more specifics, but the biggies are the first uh, ones that I mentioned. Now, diet is, of course, critical. We can't emphasize this enough. And again, I don't like that word diet. To me, it's a four letter word. It's lifestyle, right? So we really want to avoid uh, the whites. So again, I, I just kind of joke with people. I say I'm not a racist, but avoid all the whites. Okay. White bread, white flour white sugar, of course, uh, pasta, you know, of course, crackers, cereal, candy, sugar, 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 all right? Carbs, carbs, carbs. All these are refined. They spike up your blood sugar, right? They're bad for you, all right? Now, maybe that one meal won't affect you, but over time, consistently eating these foods are really bad, okay? So we prefer anti-inflammatory, Mediterranean-style type of diets or keto diets, right? But anything where you're getting... Um, fresh fruits and veggies, right? Uh, I'll keep to the berry family, uh, have the lowest glycemic as far as all the fruits. And of course, um, lean proteins, right? Salads, things like this, right? So very, very important. And consistency is the key with this, right? So we just want to point that out. Uh, now, the other thing, of course, is we can recommend the greatest supplement in the world and it's not going to work if you keep eating fast food and junk food and candy and sugar all day long. You're just spinning your wheels in neutral. OK, so again, it's a program. We want to emphasize that. And the other thing about our, our program is uh, that's different than what uh, diabetics get at the hospital um, is that their program typically is food pyramid based, which is still a lot of carbs. Um, you know, potatoes and, and things like this. Okay. And again, I used to see my dad's diet. I used to see what they would, would give him. And I'm like, dad, you can't eat this stuff. This is not good for you. And he's like, well, that's what the doctor told me. I'm like, again, is it working? If it worked, I'd be all for it, but it's not, it's not. So we have a totally different type of diet program than what they teach. At, unfortunately, they teach it at the hospitals and dietitians there. Right. Uh, and again, we'll go over that more in detail here in a minute. Okay. So carbs, of course, there's good carbs and bad carbs, right? We're talking about fruits and veggies. Again, if we're being super strict, you can lower them even further if you're able to, right? Typically 30 to 60 grams. If you're looking at the total amounts, there's some also, also some great websites here, fitday.com, carbcounter.org. Uh, the paleo diet is even a little bit more strict as far as uh, looking at your carbs. So if you want faster results, that's a great program. And there's, again, great information on their website on that. And then this book. OK, so I, I mentioned a second ago, um, there are medical doctors out there. Uh, there. There are few and far between, but there are few that are going against the green um, be, uh, with the allopathic allopathic model as far as diabetes go. And this book right here is a fantastic resource called The Diabetes Solution by Dr. Bernstein. Okay. And basically Dr. Bernstein um, 
was a type two diabetic and he did everything he was taught in med school and he was getting worse, not better. So he did all this research. And again, we're basically highlighting a lot of this in, in this presentation and our program is built, you know, with this um, and he reversed it and he talks about it. And he also explains what they're being taught at med school is incorrect. And again, he's, it's very rare for a medical doctor to speak out against their own, um, their own kind, so to speak. But, you know, sometimes when we're working with people and they go back to their doctors, their PCPs, and their PCPs are very negative about what we're trying to do naturally. So I always say, you know, the doctors, oh, I don't believe in that. It, it, there's no proof of blah, 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 blah. And a person can always say, well, actually, doc, there is, a, there is another medical doctor that actually believes in what we're talking about. His name is Dr. Bernstein. It's called the Diabetes Solution. I think you should read that. I think it would be very informative. Okay. Again, majority of docs are not aware. That's just not, not their training unfortunately okay and again if it was working i'd be all for it it's not it's getting worse and continues to get worse every day now usually the the, the situation with diabetes is that there's typically no pain right okay and if you start on the medication unfortunately the medications enable people to get worse Right. So if you're going to eat something bad that day, oh, I'll just take more medication and it'll bounce out the blood sugar. And again, it's like, oh, it's a party. Just, you know, so just keep eating whatever I want. But sooner or later, it catches up to you. And the first thing usually for diabetes that to happen is neuropathy, the loss of feeling in fingers and toes or it goes numb or it's painful. And that's when we go, uh oh, Houston, we have a problem. OK. So for people who don't believe that we can help them, this is always my first step is this formula right here, neuropathies. It's specifically designed for neuropathy. It's basically like a B vitamin on steroids. Okay. And through the year, since we launched this, we've had incredible cases that this is helping out with neuropathy. Okay. And it builds that confidence up in a diabetic that wait a minute right because the doctor will say oh nothing we can do for neuropathy nothing we can do and we can help people in one bottle with this and i've seen it over and over and over again and when they're like oh it builds that confidence so again they're feeling helpless and hopeless they can't feel their fingers and toes and we can help them in, with this one bottle and all of a sudden wait a minute why didn't my doctor tell me about this holy moly Right. And now we build that confidence that now now they're ready to start the whole program. So this is usually my first step when it comes to diabetes. If a person is feeling neuropathy. OK. And so there's a special way that we would like to take it. That is different than what the bottle says. So, again, you always have to keep in mind when you're looking at labels and you're looking at bottles, usually the, 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 the dosage on there are preventive or maintenance. However, when we're trying to uh, really deal with a more serious situation like this, nerve issues, nerve pain, anything like this, we need to be more aggressive. So clinically speaking, in the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of accounts and doctors and hospitals that I work with, I get the best results with neuropathies at six a day. OK, so let's break that up two, two and two or three and three, but six a day. And we'll know in one bottle if this helps. OK. And I've heard so many credible cases here at Wana Wellness Center and, and, and all the other practices that I work with. It, but I'll never forget this case. It was right when we first came out with the formula a couple of years ago. Uh, a doctor's office had a neuropathy, diabetic neuropathy patient, had it for 20 years, neuro, neuropathy. OK, she purchased the neuropathy's formula on a Friday. OK, started taking six a day. She called the doctor back on Monday and said she got her feelings back in her fingers and toes. 20 years, three days, folks. Now, again, is everybody going to be like this? No. Every case is different. Every situation is different. But we have seen cases like this. So anything that has to do with nerve pain, by the way, spinal stenosis, that's nerve pain impinging on your spinal cord. This is fantastic for this, right? So anything that has shingles is nerve pain. 
right? Anything that has to do with nerve pain, this is always our number one, neuropathies, okay? So keep that in mind when it comes to our first approach. Now, the other great thing, fantastic thing, is that there are so many amazing natural ingredients that we can do to help bounce our blood sugar, okay? Um, if people just want to look, it's there. So start, start with cinnamon, okay? Cinnamon, one gram a day has shown it can help lower blood sugar, okay? Keep that number in mind. Minimum one gram. You can do more, but minimum one gram. Gymnia sylvestra, right? It's been used for over 2,000 years for both type 1 and type 2 diabetes. And white mulberry leaf, okay? Fantastic for type 1 diabetes. Chromium. Right, as long as it's 200 micrograms, has been shown out with glucose. Uh, taurine, alpha lipoic acid, okay, right, and of course other uh, ingredients, very important vanadium, uh, some of the Bs, biotin, right. So you could take every one of these ingredients separately, right, and that adds up. And again, we know that 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 you know it's hard to do all these different things, or you could take one thing, one formula that has every one of these ingredients in it. And it's called glucolize. Now, this used to be called sugar salt. We recently changed the name of it. Nothing has changed with the formula, but we just wanna let people know moving forward, the new name is now glucolize, okay? So you can see two caps, you get all of these ingredients that has tremendous research uh, with them to help with blood sugar, okay? Now, if somebody is already a diabetic, we just want to emphasize they have to be checking their blood sugar. If they're going to take something naturally that's going to help with their blood sugar to help balance it, and you're already on a medication to take blood sugar, okay, then you need to be checking your blood sugar. So any diabetic that I talk to here at the Water Wellness Center or any place else, you know, before I start with them with glucolize and they're diabetic, I always ask them, do you check your blood sugar? And from time to time, a person will say no. And I'm like, hmm. Okay, so let me ask you a different question. So let's say for dinner tonight, you had a healthy salad, some organic, you know, balsamic vinegar dressing, okay? And you had steamed fish or chicken or just healthy steamed vegetables, okay? And, and fruit and veggie or fruit for dessert or not, no dessert at all, okay? And then let's say tomorrow you had pizza, beer and ice cream you mean to tell me your blood sugar is exactly the same and you feel exactly the same way and they look at me and they kind of smirk and i'm like i got you okay because i know they drill this into your head you have to be checking your blood sugar every day. And some people check it after every meal to see what food affects your blood sugar. And I know they drilled this into my, my dad. My dad would check his blood sugar all the time. So for somebody who tells me they don't check their blood sugar, that tells me they have completely given up. They are totally feel helpless and hopeless. Okay, so we just want to emphasize that, folks, you have to be checking your blood sugar if you're already a diabetic, if you're going to try a nutritional formula, because the whole idea with this is if you're eating healthier, you're checking your blood sugar, you take this formula, your blood sugar, your insulin will be less and less, your blood sugar will improve, and then you can slowly, slowly start reducing your medication again with the PCPs, of, you know, guidance. That's the whole idea. And we've helped hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people do this. But you have to be checking your blood sugar. So we just want to emphasize that uh, with this. Okay. Now, again, here's how we dose this. Okay. We recommend four caps a day. And I do suggest 30 minutes prior to eating. If you take it 30 minutes prior, you have additional appetite suppressant benefit. Right. So you're not as hungry. And again, that's all part of the deal. So four day works for the majority of people. Okay. And again, we would dose that we would do this for three months. Why three months? Because it takes three months to change your hemoglobin A1C. That A1C is a three month window. And now we can really see your numbers. We can really see, is this working? All right. Now I've had a couple cases where severe diabetes that they needed additional or doctors who were muscle testing 
need felt and they tested that they needed a, a third dose before lunch. Okay, but generally speaking, four day is fantastic to help balance out these blood sugar. So this is always our number one. Okay, so now number two would be one of our fruit and veggie drinks. Okay, so this is actually uh, fantastic for your blood sugar and you get five servings of fruit and veggies in it. Why is it great for blood sugar? Because it has green coffee bean extract in it. And that actually helps stabilize your blood sugar, your blood glucose and insulin levels. Okay. So it will also give you energy. It's also great for pre-workout. It also helps support your adrenals as well. But again, I mentioned it uh, earlier, most diabetics, the toughest time for them is right after lunch from noon to about three or four o'clock. All right. That's when they crash. They feel very tired. They want to take a nap. Right. So this is a fantastic time to add the pro oranges. Just one scoop, a little ice and water. It's fantastic to me. It kind of tastes like Tang with all the without all that bad stuff. For the, so for those who remember Tang, kind of dating myself there as well. But but you get your fruit and veggies all at the same time. It's simple. Now, again, you can take this any time of the day. Uh, people add this with one of our shakes. If you add this with one of our vanilla uh, proteins, whey or super shake, it tastes like an orange creamsicle. So there's a lot of different ways you can use this. But this is looking at from if you're not eating enough fruit and veggies, okay, and it's going to help with blood sugar and it's going to help with energy and retail, normal retail, and this is $1.65. A dollar sixty-five a serving, which is impossible. You'll never be able to get five servings of fruit and veggies. Plus, if you were to add up all the fruit and veggies that you're getting, it'd be well over two hundred dollars worth of fruit and veggies. That normally we're you know, retailing this is like forty-nine fifty, fifty bucks. Okay, now obviously it's on special today, but even at that price, you're actually saving over hundred fifty dollars a month. So I know people don't look at that, but you have to look at it because it's 30 servings, five servings of fruit and, fruit and veggies every single serving. Okay, so that's always number two if you're not eating enough fruit and veggies and helping with the blood sugar. All right, third on the list would be berry tone. Okay, so this is very unique if you are having those cravings. If you're pre-diabetic or type 2 diabetic, okay, this is um, fantastic to help with the, the cravings. So for what has been shown is that there's hormones that are in your fat cells, okay, in your fat tissue. And these hormones are called leptin and adiponectin. And these are directly tied in with your blood sugar. And they specifically affect your cravings. So when I'm talking to a diabetic, and they tell me, I can't stop eating. I can't stop. You know, this is, they're not joking. This is the biochemistry behind it is these hormones. So the ingredients that are in the baritone will actually help to rebalance these hormones, the leptin and adiponectin, which in turn will help stabilize your blood sugar, which in turn will help with the cravings. Okay. So it's a very unique way of looking at weight loss and carb, carb cravings and sweet cravings approaching them from a totally different perspective. And again, we get the best results if you take two caps 30 minutes before breakfast and dinner. So if you're blood, if you are diabetic or you have blood sugar issues, pre-diabetic, and you're having trouble with that weight issue, and you're really having trouble with the cravings, try this formula, try it. And again, most people feel right away, definitely within a couple of days, you should definitely though within one bottle, you know, if this helps. And again, it's just another way of helping you what's really going on in a, in a biochemistry level. All right. And then of course, proteins. Okay. So we have three different options. We have whey, we have vegetarian super shake for those prefer. And we have the needle keto, which is a collagen uh, ketogenic type of protein. Uh, so any of them will work. A protein is a meal. This is a meal in itself. And because the protein, uh, we have doctors out there like Dr. Tom Bolella, who uh, has done lectures for us that has told us, looking at studies, that within 30 minutes, if you have a protein shake, it stabilizes blood sugar. Okay. So especially for breakfast is what we always recommend for a diabetic. Okay. Because it's going to help uh, because first of all, most of their uh, breakfasts are, are carb driven, right? Cereal, milk, 
right? Waffles, pancakes, toast, on and on it goes. So if they have protein, right, as their first meal of the day, a protein smoothie, it helps stabilize. And then the rest of the day will not be a roller coaster ride. So whichever your preference, they're all fantastic. Again, we have them all here at the Warner Center. Uh, so again, that's the always the best way. But you can also have it any time of the day as a meal replacement. But again, for diabetics, we typically recommend let's start out the day with with the protein a smoothie. Okay, so let's review here. Okay, obviously it starts with the diet. We can't uh, fix a bad diet supplemental wise. Okay, it always starts there. Of course, exercising. All right, any of the shakes as I mentioned. The glucolase would be our number one as far as blood sugar formula itself. Pro oranges, if you're if you're struggling with the with throughout the day with energy and fatigue, from a fruit and vegetable perspective, and then the baritone, if you're really struggling with those cravings um, and the weight gain there as well. All right, so let's go through a couple cases that were right here at the Warner Center through the years. And again, we have hundreds of other ones. We just pulled a couple here that we have been working with. So again, not making any claims. We're just showing you what uh, we've had specific people who have done these things and had these results, right? So 42 year old male, diabetic, extreme blood sugar, energy fluctuations, right? Especially after lunch, as we talked about, very tired in the afternoon. And look at that A1C, the hemoglobin A1C double digits, 10.3. So that's, you know, again, extreme diabetes when we get into the double digit mark. So this was what we recommended, right? Three and a half months. Obviously, the diet's critical, low carb. Try to avoid all the sweets. But this was the formula, the pro glucolase, four caps. So two in the morning to it and then in dinner, pro oranges, one or two servings. We added multi and we added fish oil for their, for their specific case. Okay. There's also some other great recipes and meal uh, plans on WebMD as well for diabetics too. But look at the results here. In just three and a half months on this program, they went back and got their A1C checked. It went down to 6.0. Okay. So folks, seven and higher is technically a type two diabetic. This person was no longer a diabetic. Okay, now are we making any claims? No, we're just showing you the facts. In three and a half months, they're not a diabetic anymore, looking at the lab tests, which is incredible. Okay, so that's one study or one case study. Here's another one, 52-year-old female. Again, A1C, 8.6. Now she was on metformin. That's the number one drug recommended by doctors right now. She hated the way it made it feel. And again, that's what we would all, I'd always ask anybody on any drug, how does it make you feel? Are you concerned about the side effects? She was, right? So gave her uh, nauseousness and headaches and her goal was to get off of it. The doctor said, absolutely not impossible. You're on this for life. And she actually heard uh, a radio show and she said, you know what? I'm going to try a different approach, right? So she followed the program. This is what she did, okay? Obviously, found low sugar, right? Walking five days a week, did the glucolase for a day, did the pro-oranges, right? And again, as she was checking her blood sugar, she noticed it was getting better and better. So on her own, again, working with the PCP, she discontinued metformin, okay? So again, this is the whole goal. We can do it, folks. I'm telling you, we've seen this over and over again if you give this a chance, right? So look at her results. Just two months later, her A1C was down to 5.1. She's not even a pre-diabetic anymore. The doctor could not believe it, has never seen. They, she told us the doctor's never seen this fast results before, okay? Now, did we get a call from the doctor asking us about glucolase and what we did? Nope. Have we ever got a call from... An allopathic doctor saying, how did you do this? Nope. Hmm. Interesting, huh? But she discontinued the metformin. That's another story, of course. Discontinued metformin and continued on with the food program. Okay. So, again, these are just a couple cases. We just, again, we're just putting that out there that there is always hope. It's never too late. 
right? Again, every patient should get an eye exam, right? Every diabetic person should be getting an eye exam. Again, diabetic retinopathy. If you are having eye issues, by the way, we do recommend another formula for your eyes called 2020 COPS. Six a day. I've seen many incredible cases with that formula for these kind of issues, okay? And your foot exam once or twice yearly, again, for that neuropathy. Again, if you're taking metformin, you should monitor your blood sugar carefully when starting any supplements, right? So as we talked about, emphasize that you got to test. You got to test in order to be able to do this program. If you're not testing, do not do it, okay? All right, so again, giving hope when there's no hope, right? So this is an example. We have these food uh, programs, right? We're listing the basic foods, lean proteins, or make it organic as much as possible. You know, again, we have all these food programs on our website or also here at the clinic there as well. Okay. So when you know the other thing here is I always uh, you know sometimes I I don't hear it as much, but when I first started, um, you know especially allopathic doctors way, oh, there's no research, there's no studies. Well, folks, um, this this is just on gymnemia. There's all these studies, like in cinnamon and chromium and alpha-lipoic acid. These are published studies. So this is what I do every day. I go to different offices and I show doctors these studies. Majority of them have never seen them before, okay? Again, we're just trying to enlighten them and let them know there is research on these different ingredients that we're using taurine and green tea and vanadol right so i did again just to wrap it up i just don't want anybody to go through what my my father experienced i i don't wish it on anybody uh do not become another statistic it's never too late do not give up hope and again that's where you need to come in and sit down with jeff nisnik or ashley uh rosy here they can walk you through this everybody needs a coach they are your coaches right? Especially for these severe issues like diabetes, you need guidance and help. And that's what they're there for, or any other healthcare practitioner that we work with, but it's, it's never too late. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, Mike, so much. Um, my mother uses this after she lost feeling in her legs after surgery, she had to use a cane and walk right now. She can walk freely. Wow. That's a good testimony. She must have been talking about neuropathies. Yeah. Fantastic info, Mike. Thank you for getting out there and talking with the allopathic doctors. Absolutely. So, and thanks for sharing your story. I think those are very powerful. So, um, you know, it's been a lot of people coming forward and saying, you know, me too. And I think that makes it uh, more palatable for people if they know that we're not perfect, right? Because sometimes I think they right. look at us and think we know everything or we're perfect. And <laughs> we, no. are <laughs> we are We're not. We are not. I'm almost. You're so yeah. close, Mike. You're so, so close. close. So, so close. close. <laughs> yes. But thanks for sharing your knowledge today. And thank you, everybody, yep. for joining us. If you want any of the products that Mike talked about, he is at the Weiner Wellness Center today. Stop in and visit him. I'm sure he'd love to see you and help you get on a better protocol for your blood sugar. Absolutely. Thanks, Mike. Thank All you. right, guys, stay Bye, tuned. Kadarji from the Bhakta School of, of Transformation is up next. We're very excited. And uh, we'll be back shortly. <laughs>